and welcome to another episode of Reading Reddit with Amber. Happy Spooky Sunday! Today we have another set of stories from r slash let's not meet. I use creepy music in the background for these videos. Because the sound intensity level varies depending on whether you are listening with headphones or without, I have developed both a version that is best with headphones and a version that is best without. You are listening to the no headphones version. For the headphones version, click on the link in the description below. Our first story today is I was stopped in a grocery store. This happened when I was about 18 or 19, I'm now 21, and I'm still very curious what this creepy man wanted. I went to the grocery store with my mom in the middle of the day, so it was pretty crowded there. When we first walked through the door, I noticed this man wearing paint splatter clothes standing there talking to some other guys and he was staring at me as I walked by. I didn't think anything of it, because I'm used to guys being creepers by now, and I was with my mom, so what was he gonna do? Well, after about 15 minutes of us doing our shopping, I had noticed we crossed paths a few times with the man I first saw when we walked in. Again, I didn't really think much of it, just thought he was shopping like the rest of us. But then it got to a point I started seeing him too often, like every single aisle we walked down he would come down as well. So my creeper radar went off and I began to pay more attention. I noticed this man had no cart, no basket, not even one item in his hands, and we had been shopping for at least 20 minutes by now. I also noticed every aisle we went down about 20 to 30 seconds later, he would be right behind us and stop maybe 15 feet away, grab a random item off the shelf and glance back and forth from the item he was holding to us. Once we would begin walking to the next aisle, he would put the item back on the shelf and continue to follow us, never once keeping any items he had grabbed. After about three aisles of this behavior, I decided I wasn't overreacting and I told my mom. I whispered to her that I think this man is following us, and she casually glanced over and didn't say anything. I pointed it out to my mom a second time and told her this is the fourth or fifth aisle he has directly followed us down without getting any items. This time she definitely noticed it and was weirded out, but continued as normal. Every new aisle we would walk down, he would follow us and kept doing the same weird thing by grabbing random items and immediately putting them back as soon as we started walking. We just kept whispering to each other how creepy it was getting, but didn't know what else to do. We got into the fruit slash vegetable section and didn't notice him follow us to the area. After about two minutes, we noticed him in the corner looking at and holding the coconuts and staring at us like, really? I know you're not here to buy coconuts, just stop. He wasn't even trying to be discreet anymore. So we finally finished our shopping and go to get in line. We noticed him exit the store, never once bought a single item, and we were in there for an hour. We start devising a plan to escape without him seeing us in case he was outside waiting for us. The line is pretty long, so it takes us about 10 minutes to get to the front. Just as we are loading our groceries back into the cart, we notice him walk back inside and stop and scan the area. He makes direct eye contact with me, smiles, and just walks into the store down one of the aisles. We grab the rest of our bags and walk outside as fast as we can, hoping we would be faster than him as we didn't see where he went once he walked back inside. We left out of a different exit than he had walked in, and as soon as we got outside, he was there, walking directly toward us. I instantly froze in fear because I was so scared. My mom put her hand on my back and gave me a little shove and told me to go directly to the car and get inside and lock the doors while she loaded the groceries. As soon as she was finished and got into the car, she said she saw him get into his truck, and he was just sitting there waiting. We began driving home, and of course, he began following us. My mom started to speed up, and as soon as we went around a turn and he lost sight of us, she pulled into a random gated parking lot and we hit there as he drove by. We waited about five minutes to make sure he didn't see us or come back, and we went home. I'm really not sure what he was planning on doing, but whatever it was, let's please not meet again. Our next story is... The man that followed me when I was 11. My story is nowhere near as horrendous as many of the other ones on the sub, but for some reason, I've completely blanked this memory from my brain for 8 years. In 2012, I was 11, soon to be turning 12, and my family had gone to Brighton, England to see the rest of the pack. I live in Ireland, so it's a short and easy journey over, and we did it quite often, sometimes 2 or 3 times a year. Therefore, my sister and I were familiar with Brighton and its streets. One day, my sister and I met up with our cousins, both girls. My sister was the eldest, about 14 at the time, then my older cousin who was 13, I was 11, and my youngest cousin was 10, 
so we are all quite young. We decided to go for a quick walk from my auntie's house to go to the corner shop. It would have been about five minutes from the house, so not far at all. It was the middle of the day and my parents had no issue with us doing something as innocent as going to the corner shop. We make our way downtown and buy our goods. Can't beat a dib-dab on a hot day. We left the shop and were hanging about outside, eager to eat our sweets before we got home so we didn't get shouted at. This was when we were approached by a man. My memory of what he looked like is hazy, but I recall him being around 60 years old, white hair, slightly stooped over. I remember him hanging back away from us, watching from a nearby alley. My cousins and I were young, we just thought this was funny. Something embarrassing and laughable. We started walking away when we noticed him out of the corner of our eyes. Again, we found this funny. I don't ever recall being educated on the risks of stranger danger in school. This was just something I would have laughed at. Slowly, he started catching up with us. We just thought this was a big game. I could smack 11 year old me for this for being so immature. The corner shop we were originally at was near a roundabout and a little. So we began crossing the road at the roundabout. We did this several times just to see if he would still follow. He did. We got to the car park in Little and he approached us. Now he was within talking distance, like the distance between you and a friend. He was muttering incessantly under his breath and I couldn't exactly make out what he was saying. I do recall hearing small words, however, such as swine, slut, and the B word. This is when our giggles got a bit quieter. Now Brighton is slightly rife with issues to do with mental illness and addiction. It has a high homelessness rate and, even at 11, I understood this. The auntie I had been staying with at the time was slash is a psychiatric nurse and she was inundated with clients and patients from Brighton. When he approached us and broke that intimate, invisible bubble that sets social expectations and normality, I get a chill. This small interaction in body language seems tiny and superficial, but anyone that has been in a bad situation knows what I mean by that weight that suddenly falls on your chest full of foreboding and dread. It's hard to exactly define it, but it terrified me. I think my sister and my cousins got the feeling as soon as I did. It wasn't playtime anymore or mockery. This was bad. I don't know what it was, but I knew we had to leave and leave fast. We started to walk away from this man without uttering a word to each other. We all knew. We walked quite fast and began to follow the road to our house. Of course, he followed us. This time, however, he was faster. We were genuinely scared. This man was following us, four blatantly young girls, and, if he continued, he'd know where we were staying. This was when a guardian angel in disguise swooped in to help us. It was very sudden. A woman and her three children came out of a cafe on the other side of the road and ran across the road to our side. We then formed a strange circle as we walked. Her children, who were the same age as us it seemed, at the front, me, my sister, and my cousins in the middle, and this woman at the back. She ushered us along quickly and quietly and kept saying, keep walking until I say to stop. Do not look back. The man started losing sight of us soon and the woman walked us home. I think he lost interest once he saw the woman and her band of tiny soldiers. We got in the house, terrified and shaken up, and the woman told my mom and my auntie what happened. They were, naturally, petrified. It turned out the woman had been watching the interaction from the cafe the entire time, from the corner shop to the car park. She said that this man was notorious for being a predator of minors, and that she recognized him as a well-known predator in Brighton. I don't remember much after that, apart from my family being scared. I don't know what would have happened if this woman had not helped us. Our immaturity and naivety could have seriously harmed us. If I meet this unnamed heroine, I'd thank her profusely. Now, at 19, I recognize this man as someone who probably had issues with mental illness or addiction, and I hope he is not causing himself or others, especially minors, harm. Despite this, Brighton Corner Shop Man, let's not meet. I hope you enjoyed today's videos. If you did, consider giving me a like or letting me know in the comments. I release new videos twice a week, funny or outrageous ones on Wednesdays and spooky ones on Sundays. Thanks for watching and have a great day.